Bristol Community College Bayhawks versus University of Connecticut at Avery Point. Tatiana LaFrance Boyce. And rounding out the starting five for the point, there is freshman four, number 15, Shayla Jones. And now for your Bristol Community College Bayhawks. At four, the freshman number three from Seacock, Massachusetts, Megan Perino. At the other guard, number 21 from Swansea, Massachusetts, the freshman Kaylee Oliver. At four, from New Bedford, Massachusetts, number 33, a freshman, Iris Rivera. At guard, from Berkeley, Massachusetts, a sophomore, number 30, Megan Parrish. And at four, from number 31, from New Bedford, Massachusetts, the boss, Deborah Banks. BCC is coached by Serge Moniz and assisted by Tracy Bright. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you would please rise for the for the playing of our for the singing of our national anthem by our own Lucy Cabral. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another season of Bristol Community College Bayhawks basketball. We are starting today with the first home game of the women's season. Craig Salvador joined by Dave Cardoza from FRC Media, here again for another season. Yeah, I can't believe that we're here, Craig. It seems like just yesterday we were here broadcasting games, and it looks like it's going to be another exciting season. And um, yeah, the Bayhawks are here, and this is the season opener, and what a great rendition of the uh, of our national anthem by our own Lucy Cabral. Thanks, Lucy, for that. And here we go. I'm excited for another Bayhawk season. We got Deborah Banks tipping off here. Yep, about to begin tip off. Bayhawks are coming into this game 0-1 as the pointers are coming in 1-0 and as you begin tip off. And it'll be UConn with a quick pass and already a nice pass in. Just missing, but they do get the rebound back up and they get it in on the second chance. Egypt Santos scoring the first points of the game. And I was talking with uh, Coach Serge Moniz as we have a travel call there, I was talking to Coach Serge Moniz um, prior to today's game, Craig, and he was saying that you know one of the big things they need to work on is their defense and and not allowing teams to have second chance points. And as you've seen there, right off the bat, second chance points—they can't allow that. Yep. Branch with the pass, passing again as she's looking to drive, hands it off in the corner. Santos, the lofty one, rebounded by the BayHawks. That was Kaylee Oliver as Megan Parrish driving down, going to the right, trying to put up a layup. Can't get it a fall, but she will get fouled. Megan Parrish, one of the key returners, obviously. You know, we know Megan Parrish got game, and she's back in the fold here for the Bayhawks, going to the free throw line with a strong drive to the basket there. 
Looking for big things that are making Paris this season. Also returning for the Bayhawks, Deborah Banks, who, if you've seen her, Craig, she's, she's gone through a major transfer transformation. Looking good and looking svelte. Yep, she looks to bring her game on the, in the interior for the Bayhawks. Yep, she's looking great coming into this thing, expecting big things from her this season as she's one of the leaders on this young team. As Megan Parrish sinks both of her three throws, getting the first points of the game for the Bayhawks. As here is Branch handed off to LaFrance Boyer. Boyer over to Santos, their little round the world action. Looking the drive, driving to the hoop straight at the middle, finds the open person, thought about a three, but passes it back anyway. Long past the open Santos, but she loses it. Somehow saves it, but it goes right into the hands of Kaylee Oliver, who's looking to drive with the right hand. She's going to put it up, and that one's going to fall for two points. And they're going to call a foul on that, too. Did they call a foul? It looked like at Don't first, but she's not going to the line. Don't think they called it. So, And also when talking to um, Coach Moniz, Craig, he did say that Kaylee Oliver is... It's a heck of a shooter, and she's definitely he's she's definitely going to be a contributor on this Bayhawks team. So look out for Kaylee, Kaylee Oliver, one of the newcomers, one of the key newcomers. UConn showing great passing games. There's a drive up the middle, but it gets rebounded by Adia Contractor. Parrish passing it to Oliver in the corner, back to Parrish. Gives it to Deborah Banks. Banks going to the paint. Fadeaway jumper That's is good like for two. See. Deborah Banks showing a little bit more lift on that jump shot. A little fadeaway jumper in the lane. Nice inside move there by Miss Banks. Yep. Throw to the paint. This one's going to go out of bounds. And I'd like to see them do more of that. I'd like to see them get the ball inside to Deborah Banks more. I think one of the things that was hindering her last year was she, was, she wasn't able to get a lot of lift on her shots in the inside as the ball is stolen away there by UConn. Yep, quick pass, Oliver is down. This one gets laid in by number three in blue, Adana Taki. Paris now with a nice pass to Banks. Yeah, I just want to point out, Craig, number 33, that's actually Iris Rivera. It's Iris Rivera donning 33, not ADA contractor like we thought. Paris to the hole again for two. UConn looking to drive, puts it up for two, and that one's going to fall. Banks trying to draw a charge, but she won't get the call. Well, that's the other Megan, the other Megan. It's going to be the battle of the Megans right there. They look, they look similar. <laughs> they look like twins. There's Megan Parrish giving to Iris. Iris popping a three, and that one's going to fall. And I heard a lot about that, Craig. I heard that uh, number 33 over there, Ala Larry Bird, I heard that she can shoot. Coach Serge Moniz said that she's a great set shooter, and that was a great set shot from three-point land. That it was, and she's trying to get a steal, but it gets recovered by UConn. Putting it up in a soft two, able to fall from Egypt Santos. Oliver now trying to go to the right. And that was Egypt Santos with the two there for the pointers. I thought Deborah Banks had good position. She had her hands up, but... Would have liked to see her go for a block there. <coughs> I'd like to see BCC be more aggressive on the defensive end. Well, that's like you said. You talked to the coach, and the coach was saying that's what they need to do. Deborah Banks trying to find someone to pass you. She finds Megan Parrish. And it's going to be a turnover. Again, keys to the game, Craig. BCC needs to come out and establish themselves early and at least keep themselves in it. We see them get down a lot last year, and they kind of got they kind of got a little disenchanted a little bit. Any, anytime they would fall behind in the early going, they would find themselves trying to like scratch and claw and get themselves back, or or find themselves kind of down their luck a little bit. They need to they need to get out to a good start and, and at least hang in there in the early going. As you were talking, there was a foul drawn by Deborah Banks. There's a three, this one takes a while, it will not fall. Santos flying in for the rebound. And I believe she is going to be going to the line. No, it's not going to be, it's going to be a foul, but not in the act of shooting, it looks like. Yeah, and Santos is pretty athletic. She came flying in for the rebound. They need to keep her out of the paint. Oh. Speaking of in the paint, a pass right in. Iris tries to get it. It's going to be out on her. Got it. 
So now again, the pointer's getting another chance at this. Breakaway play, finds the open person, and the shot for three, airballed. And the Bayhawks wisely letting it go, and it'll be their ball. Well, it was a nice inbound play. They had the shot that they wanted, but it was way, way off kilter there by, who's that, number 30? It was 30, Hannah LeBeau. Hannah Montana. <laughs> <laughs> UConn with a I press. I Hannah Montana. Now she's kind of like gone off the, off the deep end. Just a little bit. <laughs> eleven to eight, Craig. It seems like um, seems like we've been playing forever. We've, we're only two minutes in. Eleven to eight. There have been some back and forth action going on. Yeah, it could be a good one. Iris passing in, and that gets knocked out of bounds by Boyer, or Boyce. So now shaving a second off the clock, we're going to try this again. There's Rivera getting ready. Finds Oliver, gives it back. She's going to put up a shot. This one will be just missed, and it will get rebounded, taken away. They're going to call a jump ball. Again, that was like a nice little give and go there. Settled for the jump shot and had the shot she wanted, was wide open. Just failed to connect. Nick Rivera trying to pass this one in again. Finds Parrish from deep. Parrish giving it to back to Rivera in the paint. She's going to put up two nice. off the glass. And that's where she should be doing most of her work. Pounding the ball on the inside. Her and Deborah Banks need to be key contributors on the interior for the Bayhawks. In the meantime, Boyce puts up a three, unable to get it, coming down with it. Looks like Banks had it. But it gets ripped away from her, and UConn will put up a two. And now that it was number 32, that is Mia Brennan going to the line trying to complete the three-point play. Yeah, she had the ball ripped away from her there, Craig. 13 to, 13 to 10 though, Bayhawks hanging in there. They did have a big loss in the season opener against Massasoit the other night, this past Tuesday. This is the home opener, looking for a better showing here against UConn. And yep, looking to erase that, try to get the first W on the season. That's right, and we get the C team here, we get the dream team is back. That's it. Cardoza Cabral and the and the Portuguese cowboy himself on the on the call. Haven't heard that name in forever. <laughs> well, you cut the hair, Craig. I, I did know. cut the hair, shaved the it, beard. You know, and I look like the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have a little so we have a little powwow discussion here. Yeah, I was gonna say long discussion on the court. I know, we must have some NFL refs in here today. <laughs> <laughs> do we have an instant replay going on? What's going on out there? What are we discussing here, Craig? I don't know, might be someone with the clock, not exactly sure. Well, that's always an issue. Whether well, it's the amount of fouls, they're looking to be taking Deborah Banks out. I think they're I think they're disputing on who the foul was called on. You see Deborah Banks throwing her hands up. She doesn't think it's on her, but it is going to go to her. That's her third foul in the game. And she has all of um, BCC's fouls. Yep, she does. They don't need they don't need her to be in foul trouble. BCC also has only six active players, and you'd hate to see them have to play have to play all five, they're only five for the rest of the game as Iris draws a foul. I'd like to see um, Miss Megan Parrish, I'd like, to see her, I'd like to see her be more assertive on offense here. Oh, nice pass to Oliver. Her Oliver trying to get some crossover and it gets stolen away. Here's Brennan with a nice pass, mid-range mid jumper, not able to fall yeah, as the rebound by Rivera. And you can tell, Craig, UConn's looking to run. Long pass yeah, to Parrish, she puts up a Megan. three. 
unable to fall, gets knocked away and gets taken away from UConn as it's gonna knock out of bounds and they are gonna say it is Bayhawks ball. Thirteen, thirteen, and both teams got three fouls. All kinds of threes on the board right now. Five minutes left to play in the first quarter. And the pass from thirty-three to thirty. Back to yeah. Iris Rivera, looking to drive, passing it back, and they're going to say a foul. They're going to say offensive foul. And nope, the foul will be on Idana Taki from UConn. Taki. So Not the best with pronunciation. <laughs> you got it right there. I'm telling you that H is silent. Taki. Well, but anyway, Rivera looking to drive. Throws it up from the left side. Can't get it to fall as Santos gets yeah. the rebound. She had what she wanted. Strong move. Just couldn't get it to fall there. And here's a three lofty air ball. Parrish didn't want to rebound it. She wanted to go out of bounds, but it got slapped in from Brennan. Brennan with all the time in the world. Puts up a three oh, and gets it to dagger. fall. That's an early dagger. You can't let them... That was a loose ball. That was like a 50-50 ball. You got to get to that. Yep, Megan Parrish, and there's a turnover quick right there. That's a bad pass. Yep. This one in the paint gets stolen away or gets knocked away by yeah. Rivera, who now has it. Yeah, nice block by Iris there. And, and only to lose it back. That was a miscue right there. And that will go to fall. It was a miscue right there as uh, Megan Perino was not expecting the pass. She was not able to get a hand on it, and it got yeah. stolen away. So just miscommunication from the Bayhawks. I thought it was a good job by Megan Parrish and a great hustle to get back in the picture and, and avoid following her there. Almost looked like she got a piece of it, but nope, and it was go. that Perino? That was Perino, yeah. Perino powered it up and in, 18-13 early on. No, one, uh, one thing go to the previous play, it was the – Three-point attempt. It was an air, it. Uh, it got airballed, and Megan Parrish was trying to block the defender, trying to let it go out of bounds. So it'd be the Bayhawks' ball. But Mia Brennan came up and slapped it back into play. Got wide open. Was able to drain a three. So Mia Brennan yeah. essentially saved that play. And, and maybe Megan Parrish should have gotten the rebound. She tried her best to let it go out of bounds. But either way, Mia Brennan was able to take advantage of it. And right now the point is, Craig. They're just getting. They're getting to more of the loose balls. It seems like they're they're. They're getting out on the fast break. They're getting the numbers that they want, and they're and they're out rebounding the Bayhawks. And they're and they're grabbing and they're and they're grabbing offensive rebounds. So they're getting they're getting second and third chances. So the Bayhawks are lucky right now to be down only five points right now. Yeah, that's really the thing. The pointers are just capitalizing on mistakes the Bayhawks are making. They're playing a full, they're playing a press early on. It's Megan Parrish. They're just all over them. A very aggressive defense from UConn Avery Point. And Perino losing that one again. And I think the key for BCC, Craig, is they need to be patient and not panic when that press is on them. Because they can break this press. That they can, but they've just been throwing it away early on. Passing the corner. Jumper is going to be overshot, but being in there to rebound it is Idana Taki. And there it is. Yeah, you get a, you get a block out. Number 10, Casey, number 10, Casey Amaral was right there, but she did not block out. Amaral with a the jumper there, no good. Nope. This pass, Parrish gets a steal. And she's looking to drive. Will the defender beat her to her? And she's going to run out of bounds. She will not draw a foul. So now this is Pointer's ball. Shayla Jones playing very tight defense on Megan Parrish. Well, Megan driving to her right. Like the, the whole time. You know. That, jo that, that looked too easy right there. Yeah, Jones just really running through the Bayhawks defense on that play. Gets up an easy two. Well, they get some height. They get some height and some athleticism there. Tatiana LaFrance voice and... Oliver thought about three, tries driving it in, and gets it taken away from her. Oh, nice block. Way to, way to body up by Iris. Iris Rivera with a good defensive play there. And they call the foul on Kaylee Oliver. Debra Banks looking to check back in. The new and improved transform. Deborah Banks looking to have a 
breakout great sophomore season. Looking to rebuild and reclaim. <laughs> you know it. Who did she go in for? Anyway, here's a jumper. Three, and that Ooh. one's going to fall. I think it was only a two, Craig. Was it, was it at a three? Uh, no, but I think they count as a two, so it's Megan Bianchi. She had her foot on the line, but that was a beautiful shot. Nothing but net. Yeah, as Megan Bianchi. Here's Kaylee Oliver trying to shoot a two. That one's going to miss. Gets rebounded by UConn. BCC going down, settling for one shot. I mean, nice steal by Megan Paris in the hustle, but she stepped on the line. Seems like the Bayhawks, uh, Craig, when they get into the half court set, they're not they're not moving the ball, they're not really they're not motioning around, they're not moving. With, players are not moving without the ball. Their half court set is really stagnant right now. Hmm. I'm trying to draw up a play, this gets thrown away on the other side. Either way, Brennan having it. Here's Boyce back to Brennan. Brennan looking to drive. She finds her teammate inside yes. and puts it up for two and just no defense from BCC. Bayhawks defense looking very, very vanilla. And here comes Megan Parrish driving with a full head of steam, unable to get it to go, and this is going everywhere. So Megan Parrish got to work in that left hand. That was a good move for her, from her to, to um, turn it up into the middle there instead of going all the way to her right. I'd like to see her develop more of that left hand. I remember you talking about that all last season. I was season. taking that all last year. We see Kaylee Oliver going to the line, get her first free throws of this game. Look to cut the lead down. 26 to 13 with 146 remaining in the quarter. As that one's able to go. And Craig, as I was saying, it's important for BCC to stay within striking distance in that first quarter. Because once, once they find themselves down, especially with their depleted bench, not having that much of a bench, it seems like they just, they kind of lose hope a little bit and start playing a little bit of hero ball and not not playing patient. You need to, you need to be able to play patient in this game. Up there, able to One get. play at a time. That ball sails out of bounds. Oh, that gets stolen away. Boyce going to drive. She's got Megan Parrish in her Boyce. way. Gets a good pass. And Santos throws it up and gets it to fall. Very, very unselfish. And she got the pass there from number 32, I believe. Mia Brennan with a nice little dish. Sweet play. Megan Parrish trying to cross over. Finds Deborah Banks at the key. Deborah Banks tried to give it to Parrish. She gets blocked away. And this one's going to roll out of bounds, but it'll stay for the Bayhawks. BCC looking all out of sorts on the offensive end. I'm telling you, they're lucky to be in this game. I mean, remotely in this game, 28 to 15. Seems like it could be a lot worse the way they're turning the ball over. And there's a backcourt violation. As we see right there, a careless turnover right there. That's a tough one. Brennan handed in. Brennan was not in the starting lineup, but she's been proving big early on as there's a three drop by Boyce. And if you remember, Craig, last year, LaFrance Boyce was a big, she was a great three-point shooter when, we, when, we, when they last played them last year. And they've shown it there as the Bayhawks doing a pretty good job handling this press as Megan Parrish looks to drive. Thought for a very deep three, but handed into the paint. Looks for the hook shot, can't get it. And that gets blocked. The pointers are so much active on the defensive end. What a pass down court. The difference between UConn when they're on the defense when they're on the defensive end and the Bayhawks is that the um, UConn's defense isn't vanilla. They're going they're going for blocks. They're going for steals. They're being much more aggressive. They're taking more chances. That they are in this press again. Bayhawks cannot figure out this press as Kaylee Oliver looks to drive and just gives it away to Boyce. It was an intended pass, but Boyce hung on to it. Now Boyce starts to kick it, but hands it back out. A floater for two. Can't get it to fall. This one is going to roll out of bounds, and it will be Bayhawks ball. Bayhawks lucky to come back again with that one. The, pointer, the pointers had the numbers. They couldn't get it to drop. 
Parrish goes to the right, tries to get a pass, and that just gets blocked. He gets rebounded and in for Deborah Banks. Good job by Deborah Banks there. Stay with it, put it up and in. Clock winding down. They have, and this one does get to go, and that one's gonna go at the buzzer. Unbelievable. I told you, LaFrance, boy, she's got that, she's got that sexy looking left-handed jumper going in the corner. It's and just like that, Craig, 34 to 17 at the end of the first quarter when it was a lot tighter than that. Yeah, Tatiana LaFrance boys at the buzzer for the three-pointer. Well, if you remember, Craig, last year she killed, I mean, Tatiana LaFrance boys killed the Bayhawks last year. And um, she's back for her sophomore campaign, and she is a big reason why the pointers are, the pointers are up 34 to 17. And Craig, who are some of the key contributors here in the um, in the first quarter for BCC? Right now, it's spread out pretty much. Deborah, so there's 17 points right now. Deborah Banks has two of them. Kaylee Oliver, uh, actually, this is a. Uh, I can get that in a second. I've been trying to keep track of score. With a new app called Easy Stats Basketball, I recommend you all download it off the Apple Store, off that, the App Store, that and Google Play. Your butt right now. It's it's new. I'm trying to figure <laughs> it out. I think I think the color commentator should be handling that. That's what I figured too during it, <laughs> but I don't want to have to show you it. So it'll definitely be uh no, it'll definitely be something for the men's game that'll work out. But right now, uh, Iris Rivera is two for two in field goal attempts. She has a three-pointer in the game. Kaylee Oliver also has two points. Megan Parrish has a, also with two. You also see Deborah Banks has four points. And, uh, and a funny story about Deborah Banks is I was um, in my pre-production, in our my production meeting with uh, Coach Rob Del Lu, the men's coach, and I was in his office talking to him, and this young lady walked in and was talking, and looked at me and was like, well, hence the guy that loves himself some Megan Parrish. <laughs> and I'm like, who the hell the heck is this girl? And then she's like, well, you have a pretty cool nickname for me, though. And it was the boss, yeah. Deborah Banks, and which you, I didn't take credit for her nickname. Yeah, you tried to, though. But that's, I all, that's all me. I didn't even recognize who she was. Now you can see she's in tremendous shape now, yeah. and she's definitely – Definitely looking to be one of the key contributors as she's already been doing this game, trying to be one of the key contributors to this Bayhawks team throughout the season. And she showed major improvement, I thought, last year. She was getting way, she was getting better as the season went on. You know, went from being, I think she started out as one of the bench players and then, then she made her way really became the, one of the best scorers on the team. Yeah, and then she made her way into the rotation or into the starting lineup and really started uh, getting rebounds getting close to double-doubles, but she was one of the better rebounders on the team last year. Yeah, she was um, good at free throw shots. Yeah, and definitely had a good field percentage, I felt. And when she had opportunity, she made them underneath, and she only looks to get better. And, she, yeah, she, like you said, she always made her free throws, so that's what we look to see. Really earning the nickname of the boss, Deborah Banks. Yeah, needs the ball, needs the ball more. Get her the ball inside. What are you doing? Here's a shot from three, and that is Mia Brennan again draining it from three. You know, between between Brennan and LaFrance, Craig, they're both left-handers. I don't know which one's which. Deborah Banks going to the right, almost losing it, hangs on to it, tries to find an open person, finds Parrish with a nice shot. Here's uh, Ooh, that was that an hit, interesting bounce. And that hit the um, that hit the shot clock, so that's going to be out of bounds. Yep, so a missed three-pointer from Iris Rivera. Kelly Oliver has like a textbook look. She has a textbook looking uh, set shot. She definitely has a nice shot, a nice release. She's been kind of off besides that one three pointer, but it definitely looks good coming out of her hand. And I could see why Coach Serge Moniz said that he's got a good shooter there and just got to get him to drop, right? Yep. <clears throat> so again, for BCC Craig, like you said, they return. Miss Deborah Banks, she looks to be in tremendous shape, worked hard in the offseason, and uh, is going to be a key contributor for this team. Yeah, we Megan also, Parrish. I was going to say, we also got your girl, Megan Parrish. Oh, my girl. Hey, I like, you know, I like stars. I like, I like you know, I like ballers. 
She can ball. She like can ballers? She can ball out there. Yeah. Get some big ballers here in, uh, here at Bristol Community College. That's right. Big so baller brand. Big baller brand. Give me a break. So Megan Parrish and Deborah Banks are back. The key new faces that we have on the court here. Uh, Miss Iris Rivera. Yep, also see Megan Perino and Kaylee Oliver making the starting lineup. That's right. Iris Nita Rivera is her name from Greater Vogue Tech High School in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Pass, a nice inbound pass to Santos. Knocked out, and I think they're calling a foul. Looking forward to the men's game after this game. Men's big winner uh, was a winner over Massasoit and there was in their season opener on the road in Brockton at Massasoit Community College. That game is at eight. So stay tuned if you're watching on FR Media. Meg after this game, it's gonna be the men's game. Megan Parrish comes up with a steal. Oh, Megan handing it to Iris. Iris thought about it, gonna give it back to Parrish. Parrish going to the right. Pass back, trying to Oliver, gets knocked away by Boyce. It goes out of bounds, so Oliver will hang on to it. Lucky not to have another turnover there, but better ball movement. And no shot. That clock is running. Those are precious seconds running out the clock. No, nope, it's more, more disputing going on on the court. What else is new? <laughs> They do finally stop the clock. Last year, Craig, BCC failed to make any uh, postseason post tournaments. Maybe this year can be a different story. Only six active players right now, but if they get, if they get a couple players back, can be looking at a danger. About eight or nine, about eight. And time to go for it again. <laughs> As they called a foul on Shayla Jones, but not in the act of shooting. Well, it's going to be a long night. Techno <laughs> technology, how does it work? Still in the second quarter here. 8.43 left to play. Yep, 37 to 17. Trouble with the clock. And we gotta push back the clock 11 seconds. Oh, here we go. And now finally getting back to play. Megan Parrish to Banks. Banks with a jumper for two. Not able to fall. Ooh. That's now, her shot, though. She can make that shot from out there. Boyce with a full head of steam, completely bodying Banks. You could hear the thud. The thud. Boyce is okay, or Banks is okay. Boyce a little slow to get up. Oops, watch it, Lucy. Don't fall. Now Rivera and bound pass, giving it to Oliver. Some good passing from BCC. This is what we need to see more from. Not that though, as it's a turnover again. Lost it, throwing it back. Boyce, nice pass from the top of the key is Santos, and that one's going for two. Pretty shot. Pretty shot there, and again, BCC kills with the basketball. Long pass, Banks hanging on to it, staying in bounds, trying to find something to do with it. Hold she's, the ball too long. Yep, she's going to chuck it to Parrish. Shot clock winding down. There's a two. Not able to fall. Nobody, no, one going, no one going after that basketball. BCC clearly getting out, out hustled in this one. That they are. And Santos with an easy two. Nice look there by Mia Brennan. That was a nice pass. And another steal. And this might be a long night for BCC as this one lays in and is able to fall. 
They're getting a lot of steals. They're getting a lot of steals, a lot of turnovers. Is this four? Off this press, and there goes another ball out of bounds. Yep. BCC unable to handle the press so far in this game. Well, BCC has six women. They have five on the court right now, obviously. But they only, they only have six active players. So right now, UCAP, the University of Connecticut at Avery Point, they are wearing down BCC right now, and it shows. Long pass, BCC Santos. Looks tired. And UCAP, they've been showing good passing, good teamwork so far in the game. Well, they're unselfish. They make the extra pass. They move without the basketball. The, the offense is fluid. Yep. So it's very similar to a Spurs offense. It's not very. It's not the flashiest, but it's getting. It, it's definitely getting it done. Or how about the Celtics offense? It's fluid. It's it's unselfish. They've also Guys been. Are, they're uh, making. They're making plays and getting shots in the context and the motion of the offense. They've been playing good defense as well as well as the Celtics. Celtics on this 10-game winning streak. They, ooh, there's a ooh, big that hit. Was a collision. Oh, this doesn't look good as Iris Rivera coming down hard. Yeah, she took a, she took a hit there. Yep. And who did she run into? Was that Burns? I think it was number 33, Jonah Burns. Yeah, Jonah Burns. She got she got right up after that. And coming in substituting Megan Perino. Megan, Megan Perino will come in for a shaking up. Iris Nita Rivera. Oliver with the shot for three. Can't get it to fall. And long pass open. Trying to pass under the hoop, but just couldn't get it. Miss Q and it rolls out of bounds. I don't think either Santos didn't see it or she just wasn't ready for it. And yeah, I'm looking at Megan Parrish right now. I mean, how many shot attempts does she have? It doesn't seem like she has that many shot attempts. If it's over five, I'd be shocked. Now, hasn't been that many. She's been passing a lot. Yeah, and she needs to be scoring a lot. And Santos with the drive, puts it up with the right hand and gets it to fall, 44 to 17. And Egypt Santos has been dominating. 45 to 17. Yeah, Egypt Santos has been dominating this first half. Banks draws a foul. I'm surprised Banks caught that ball in, bet in between Burns and, and uh, Egypt Santos there, playing like free safeties for the Patriots. Yep. Looking like... Looking like Pat Chung and Deron Harmon back there. You were asking about Megan Parrish. She's one for three in field goal attempts so far. Yeah, that's unacceptable. She needs to start. You don't need to be passing the ball. You know, you're the one, only, one of the only girls on the team that can create offense for themselves. You need to be driving to the hole. And Deborah Banks misses a two. UConn driving more, this time with the left hand. That does get rebounded from Perino. I feel like I feel like Connecticut can do anything they want when they get the basketball. They can go go anywhere they want to on the floor. Oliver puts up a two. Can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Perino, but Perino doesn't get it up in time, but somehow Banks has it. And Oliver for three. That nice. one falls. Nice shot. And very quick on offense is UCAP. But Banks gets a rebound. I like to see BCC. And they're going to call a foul there on LaFrance. Yep, almost got stolen away, but instead of foul. I like to see BCC cut into this lead a little bit and make a little run here. 537 left in the second, Craig. Looking to get things going. Parrish misses her first free throw. And checking back in for the Bayhawks. Arasnina Rivera coming in for number 10, Casey Amaral. Casey Amaral, another new, new player to this team, went to Case High School in Swansea, freshman. Second free throw made by Megan. And now back on offense is UCAP. The pass up. Thought about shooting a three. I thought she was going to. Gives it to Santos. Santos puts it up for two. Can't get it. Banks with another rebound. Banks getting quite a few rebounds here in the short term. Megan Parrish puts up a three. No good, just short. Not enough oomph in that. Nice little, she made a nice little move to get herself open, but couldn't connect. 
And Taki gets bodied, but it's going to stay for the Bayhawks. And, and the pointers are, they are, they are using that zone. Of the, there's, there's so many holes in the Bayhawks zone right now, and the pointers are just using them up. They're finding a lot of holes in that zone. Bayhawks have to get more aggressive on defense. Oliver all the time in the world drains and she nails it. it. Megan Parrish with the assist, the three-pointer from Kaylee Oliver all the time in the world. She could have shot that shot and order a pizza and still get it in. <laughs> now the rebound from they Iris use Rivera. An, use another one of those. Find your shooter. And Bayhawks starting to go on a little bit of a run here. Gives it to Oliver. Thought about another one. She's going to plant her feet for two. And that one just she missing. She shot it when she first had it. I would have pulled it. She was feeling it. That was a long pass. Some good movement as number 33, Jonah Burns, able to haul it in, give yeah, it to the open person. Too, almost too unselfish there, but they score anyways. Yep, Egypt Santos getting on the board again. Egypt Santos doing it for the pointers. Mia Brennan comes back in, coming in for number five, Megan Bianchi. And on our side, we got... Casey Amaral coming in for Megan Parrish. BCC started getting on a little bit of a run here. They got to keep that up. And she looks tired. And she's been MP, MP looks tired, and she, it showed there on the court. And she's been hustling this entire game, and again with the lack of a bench as that one gets stolen away from Burns. Burns looks to drive, tried to pass, no look but Taki was not paying attention, so it goes out of bounds. Now you hear the coach, and he basically summed it up. He just said overpassing. Yeah. They were not expecting that. They have been, they have been overpassing, but <laughs> it's, it's worked for them. Yep. Speaking of passing, they've Rivera finds too, it. They've been almost too unselfish. Amaral saves it, but no one to get it. So Santos now driving, turning on the Jets, driving to the hoop. No one is on her, but it does get blocked by Rivera. It's going back the other way. They're going to say it's off her knee, off her leg. And I liked her not being um, unselfish there. She had a clear lane to the hole when she drove it. She just lost it off her leg. And I think it was actually Iris Rivera coming out of nowhere with a block, able to knock it down. Great hustle play. And now Rivera looking to drive. Finds Perino. Perino just can't get it. Bounced out. Drive again. Pass. Floater. No good. Gets rebounded by Perino. Oliver to Rivera. Rivera with a pass to Banks. Banks from the key. Too short. Deborah Banks going to do a better job of setting her feet there and getting some leg into that. She oh, just turned around and kind of just hurled it, hurled it at the basket. Oh, the Bayex did have it, but it got stolen away. Santos with a hard pass to Brennan. Brennan has a wide open shot, or a wide open pass Ooh. to Taki as it falls for three. Taki wide that open a, all the time, but it took forever to get it to her. It seems like when the pointers make a shot, especially, especially from, the, from three point land, it just looks beautiful. It's like nothing but net. Excellent rotation on that shot. That was a beautiful shot by Taki. And the one thing, you could even hear the bench and the uh, coaches screaming at her. She was open forever, and it took a while to get it to her. As when she got it, she took advantage of her opportunity, and she sunk it. That she did. And the Bayhawks, their ship is sinking right now. Yeah, they had a little bit of a miscue, and it went out of bounds. This quick passing game really working for UCAP. Is here's a... Two-pointer, no good. And Parrish does get the rebound. And Parrish gives to Oliver. Oliver loses it, and it goes out of bounds. And that's a shame, because we've been seeing a lot of that. A lot of balls just, just going out of bounds. Balls being thrown out of bounds. Balls just kind of, you know, being kicked out of bounds. Throwing the ball to the other team. Yep, and the timeout is being called. You know, right now stepping over the timeline. A lot of just kind of careless little, just little mistakes. That UConn is finally, they are um, finally capitalizing a lot of these mistakes, and now they're up 25, with 2:38 left to play in the first half. 
only one team foul, Craig, and you know you don't want to get yourself into foul trouble. And I know that they they have um, a very empty bench right now, and they don't have too many sub substitutes. So you don't want to get too many people in foul trouble, but you got to be aggressive. Yeah, right now Deborah you know. Banks has three for the team. The defense isn't aggressive enough. They're not, and they're not being physical. Well, they just one for two. Rebounded again by Megan Parrish. And Parrish the pass to Rivera. Rivera trying to cross it up. Driving to the left. Can't get it to go. Nice move there. Nope, nice move there and getting the contact and going to the free throw line. I like yeah. to see that a little bit more from Miss um, Iris Rivera. And this is her first attempts from the free point line. She's able to get that first one to go. Like I said, she's got that good. She's got that good set shot from the outside. She's definitely a. Th she's definitely can be a threat from the outside. But I like to see her, you know, take that ball to the hole more. Yep. Or get it to the get her get her the ball on the inside. Both free throws made. There's a three oh, from a Boyce. Three and she was knocked to the ground. Yep. Hope she's okay. She's holding her lower back, Greg. Oh, what a block. And you could see Casey Amaral going for the layup and just got swatted out of the air. And LaFrance Boyce took a hard shot on the three-point attempt. Yeah, she did. Shayla Jones just came out of, the, out of the woodwork and just smacked the heck out of that shot by Casey Amaral. Now, I almost said Casey Anthony for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Parrish misses the three-point attempt. <laughs> uh, BCC had a second attempt, but they couldn't get it. Taki trying to get the two-point layup, couldn't get it. Rebounded Ooh, by Rivera. Parrish tripped up, gets it to Iris. Iris thinking about it, gives it back to Parrish, wide open for three. And, and Megan Too Parrish short. is way off. She's just way off here in the first half. Nice pass Ta by Boyce. And Taki with the easy layup for two, and they reach the half century mark in this game. Does a UCAP. And you're talking about Megan Parrish. She, uh, the, little half, the half century mark? Yeah, it's 50. Yeah, yeah. But um, did I say century mark? Yeah, you did. Uh, I could have sworn I said half century. Well, maybe you did. Yeah. Either way. But I can't hear you in my headset, so I mean that's probably why. Yeah, we gotta figure out the <laughs> figure out the tech difficulties. Yeah. Come on, Lucy, that's your game right there. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta talk to Steve. <laughs> well it's great to be back for another season, Craig. Yep, that it is. They, brought it back. To they know it. they know who stars are. This is a star business. About two things, money and rings. <laughs> yep. Our, our camera our camera woman, our sweet camera woman over here with a great rendition of the national anthem back again. And she'll be doing that again before the men's game. Get it twice in a row. Twice. Double, double trouble. Exactly. So we got quite a few double headers coming up. And now back to the line is Iris Rivera making it again. And she is three for three on the free throws. And just to put in perspective, these have been the only points the Bayhawks have come across in a while. They've missed their last nine shot attempts. Yeah, they've been really cold from the line. They're not get, they're not getting good shots. And when they get sh when they have shots, they're I mean they're missing them. Oh. Megan Bianchi getting it to fall. Two po two points. Clock winding down to halftime. Less than a minute. The pointers attack has just been all spread out. Everybody contributing for the pointers. Yeah, that it is. Rivera. The, point, the pointer sisters. Rivera can't get that one to fall. Banks gets blocked. Can't get that one either. You know, BCC has the muscle with Deborah Banks in there and also Iris Rivera. But the pointers just longer, more agile teams and more athletic. Yep. Bayhawks off the stack, can't do anything with it. Almost stolen away 
Oliver picks it up, thought about shooting it. Here's Parrish in the corner for three. In and Ooh, out, can't get it out. to fall. And that, that, that hoop just has a lid on it right now for Megan Parrish. And Santos tries to put it up, can't get it. Shot clock is off now as we were reaching Good the last there. seconds. Rivera putting up with the left hand, gets it to go for two. That is the first field goal in forever for the Bayhawks. And a good job by Rivera by slowing down and just put, putting that commonly off the glass and in. And that one goes off of Bianchi's foot. So with the last 11.8 seconds, it will be Bayhawks ball. Trying to score at least maybe one more time to finish up this half. Playing for the last shot here. Yeah, less than 10 seconds now. UCAP not giving up on defense, though. And Parrish just going to have to put it up. Gotta Someone shoot is. Got to shoot it. Banks puts it up. I think she got it to go, but it's no good. Would have counted if it went in. She got it off, but just, just short there. So we're going to be coming back here in the second half action. We got some of the stats from the first half. So we, for the your Bristol Bayhawks, Kaylee Oliver leads with 10 points. She's also tied with Iris Rivera, who also has 10 points. Megan Parrish with five, and then Deborah Banks with four. Um, with three pointers, it's been Kaylee Oliver. She has two so far, uh, which is leading the team right now. Iris Rivera has been very good from the line. With free throws, she's three for four right now. Kaylee Oliver's two for two from free throws. Megan Parrish, three for six. Deborah Banks right now has the most fouls out of anybody on the team. She has three. Then also rebounds. Megan, uh, Megan Parrish has two rebounds. Iris Rivera leading defensive rebounds with three. They're having, they're, Bayhawks have been struggling with offensive boards, though. Well, let's talk about the story of the game, Craig. Right now, the Bayhawks are getting schooled. I mean, there's no, you know, there's no other story about it. Right now, the Bayhawks are getting taken to task. Um, they do have a limited bench right now, as we know. And the Bayhawks are just... They're getting outplayed in all phases of the game. They're turning the ball over. They're making it easy right now for the pointers, you know. And uh, the pointers are really shooting the ball well from the outside. They're, they're making the extra pass. They're playing unselfish. And they're just playing a smoother game. They're doing, they're doing great in transition. Yep, and just like that, they get a quick steal, but the Bayhawks get it right back. They Iris, need to get their act together. Iris Rivera looking for a three. Can't get it to fall. BCC needs to come out and be more more impactful on defense and start. I mean, you, you got to go out there and make things happen. You can't sit back and play vanilla defense. You got to be aggressive. And they're I calling don't care steps. If everybody, fall, if everybody fouls out. And Tatiana LaFrance Boyce with the step, so the Bayhawks get the ball back. Megan Parrish looking to drive. Going to the left, handing it off, gets it right back. Now the Bayhawks with some passing. Rivera going to the hoop, throws it up, can't get it to fall, but it'll be a foul, so she will go to the line. She's three for four today in three uh, free throw attempts. And she seems right now, Craig, to be their most assertive offensive player. She's been, she's been getting the ball, and she she's, has not been shy of taking the ball to the basket or shooting it. They have 11 points with that one leading the team right now. One of two players on the Bayhawks in double digits. And you can tell that she's going to make an impact. Yep, and she improves her percentage a little bit more with that one. Nice release, nice rotation on the free throw. Bianchi, the pass to uh, France Boyce. And they keep passing here as Tacky gets it away. Bianchi looking to drive up the paint, throws it up, and gets it to go for two. Good job there. Nice little floater in the lane. BCC playing, coming out and showing a little bit more effort and a little bit more enthusiasm, though. Like yep. to see that. Swing motion, Kaylee Oliver in the corner, and they're going to call travel on her. Yeah, a little bit too quick of a first step there by Miss Oliver. But she had the right idea, driving to her left and going baseline, but got to put the ball down first. And so this will be the pointer's ball once again. Oh, low pass, but Taki able to get it. Looking to drive in the paint, throwing it up for two. That one not able to fall, but it gets rebounded by the pointers. Throws it away, but no one was ready for it. It's going all the way back. And the longest backcourt violation you'll ever see. <laughs> and BCC is um, playing with a little bit much more oomph. Oh, what a pass from Megan Parrish. Deborah Banks in the middle of the paint, can't get it to go. What a pass.
pass by Megan Parrish, but what, what about the ex, what about the extra pass there made by made by uh, Megan Perino there? Good sequence of passing, unable to get it to go though. And pass right into the paint. Shayla Jones gets it back out to Bianchi. Bianchi with a two-pointer. No good. Tipped up and rebounded by Deborah Banks. And you see the way they collapsed on her? You see the way they collapsed on Santos there? That's what they needed to do in the first half. Oliver goes to her left, throws up a two off the glass. No good. Perino gets the rebound, but just gets blocked. And despite the score, Craig, 55 to 31, still, still a 24-point lead by the pointers. Uh, BCC has coming out, has come out and showed more enthusiasm and showed more effort, especially on the defensive end. Yeah, they're looking to have a big second half. Taki puts up a three way off the glass. You and that look will, up, you gotta look up. That gets rebounded by Rivera. Rivera with a full S team, a nice pass to Oliver. Good okay, sequence of basketball. I she waited for the defense to collapse on her and made a nice bounce pass to Oliver. Great job. And Bianchi driving. Puts it up. Get no, it's tipped away. What are you doing? Just saves a backcourt. I don't know what Megan Perino was doing. Was she like stuck in quicksand or something? I don't know, and that one gets to go. LaFrance Boyce with the lay-in for two. Paris drives to her left, finds Oliver. Oliver with the three, gets nails it. Nails it. Nice pass by Parrish. Oliver nails it from the wing. Way to go. Now Bianchi from the three-point line passing it over. Again, quick passing. Taki again going to the paint. Gets blocked by Deborah Banks. And Craig, there's a little bit more enthusiasm. A little bit more intensity inside this gym now. Yeah, they're cutting it down to 22. Still a ways to go, but they are turning it up now in this second half so far. Finds Santos. Pointer's bench, very vocal. A nice pass, putting up a two-pointer, and that one falls. Egypt Santos making it look easy. Nice little, like, eight-foot jump, eight eight jump shot there. Off the pass, gets away, they're wrestling for it, gets down, and jump ball called. Great hustle there by BCC. You just want to see the effort. You want to see more, in more intensity, because in the first half, they're sleepwalking. And it's a shame you have to wait till you're down 24 points to show that you care. And we talked about the coach saying they need to improve on defense. Well, that might have been their best option as Kaylee Oliver throws it off Santo's leg. Might not have attempted to do that on purpose, but either way, get it back, finds Deborah Banks. Deborah Banks gave it to Oliver. Oliver thought about three, driving it in. Hands it back to Banks. Banks going to the right, throws it up, can't get it. And Banks on the offensive end is getting opportunities, but she's not getting them to drop. I know her field goal percentage isn't, uh, isn't the best right now, Craig, but that was a good drive to her right, just came up short. Thought she might have been perhaps fouled in that play, but didn't get the call. Nope, she's two for nine in field goal attempts right now. Bayhawks in the 2-3 zone. Santos has it, trying to find what to do with it. Here's Brennan. Brennan decides to put it up and can't get it. Gets knocked away, rebounded. Bianchi throws it up, little floater, no again. And Santos with the rebound, again no, and this time finally rebounded by Deborah Banks. Let's, oh, goodness. Megan Parrish did not see that coming as LaFrance Boy is coming out of nowhere to knock it out of bounds. Well, Megan Parrish had the right idea, but I felt like she looked up a half a second too late, got that ball telegraphed. Yep, Oliver gives it to Parrish. Parrish driving up the middle. She's just going to throw a floater, taking it herself. Can't get it to fall, and it'll go out of bounds. Fifty-nine to thirty-five, six remaining in the third quarter. As Bian Bianchi handed off to Boyce. Boyce, a deadly free throw, uh, three-point shooter, I should say. As Santos, All movement. Yep. Deborah Banks with another rebound. 
Oliver trying to cross it up, gives it over to Iris. Iris in the paint, throws it up, no good, but she will be fouled on the play. Iris doing a great job of, of getting, cons getting consistently to the free throw line. And whatever coach Serge Moniz said to his team in the locker room, Craig, seems like there is, like they, the Bayhawks are playing with much more focus and much more intensity and their offense, they seem to be making the extra pass. They seem to be more lively on offense and getting, getting better looks at least. Yeah, definitely, like we said, uh, looking like a different Bayhawks team right now as Iris misses both of her foul shots. Well, definitely from, a, from, an, eye, from an eye test. Yeah, Bian much different. Bianchi mid-range shot, no good, but it gets taken again from UCAP. Brennan throws up a two, no good again, and Santos getting the rebound. BCC still doesn't have an answer for, for Miss Santos. She's able to go up and grab the ball anytime she wants. They're not blocking her out. Even when they try to block her out, she's just so lengthy. Her arms and everything, and she's able to leap. She's getting that basketball. Mm -hmm. Deborah Banks now with her fourth foul of the game. Megan Bianchi gets hanging on to the ball, tips it to Mia Brennan. LaFrance Boyce, good movement again. Mia Brennan for three, no good. Falls into the arms of Megan Parrish. I swear the pointers, they move the ball so quick. Yeah, fast paced action from the pointers, but now Kaylee Oliver throws up a three, misses that one. Deborah Banks trying to get the offensive boards, and she will. They're relying too much on the three. You're not gonna get it all back in one swoop. Rivera throws up and can't get it. Oh, man, that's just not the shot that you want. Nope. There's a long pass, Parrish takes it and it goes out of bounds, it'll stay for UCAP. Parrish playing free safety back there. Yeah, tried to intercept it, couldn't get it. Who's number 30 for the Patriots, is it Deron Harmon? I think so. Good job of making Parrish getting back there, knocking it out of bounds. Still 59-35. Yep. Um, Bianchi throwing up a two, easy fall, two points. Megan versus Megan. Right now the Megan for the pointers has the upper hand. Yeah, Megan, been a time on Me Megan on Megan crime. Yep, yeah, and a timeout call. 61-35, 424 remaining in the third quarter. And right now I like the way you know, the Bayhawks are showing more, you know, more aggression, more aggression on the defensive end, but it's still they're down, you know, 26 points. So 61 to 35, I just feel it's a shame that you wait until the second half when you're down 25 points, you know, to start, you know, uh, showing a sense of urgency. When in, in reality, they should have came out with that same intensity, mm -hmm. you yep. know? Bayhawks are improving on their defensive rebounds. Deborah Banks has five on the game. Uh, Iris Rivera has four, but where they're struggling is the offensive boards. They've only had two, one from uh, Megan Perino, one from uh, Deborah Banks. So they are getting the defensive rebounds, but they're not able to get the offensive ones. Uh, Rivera going to her right, using the body, can't get it to fall. Quick pass from Kaylee Amaral, a quick recovery from Kaylee Amaral. Couldn't get it though. And new now she just throws new, it out of bounds. Shot clock and then you throw it out of bounds. To your point, Craig, about the defensive rebounds, yeah, they're getting defensive rebounds, but after the other team has already had second, third, third, and fourth opportunities. So they're rebounded eventually. Hmm. You know. Rivera again using the body. I think they're going to call an offensive foul. Yep, they are. And as far as the offensive rebound, yeah, they're they're one they're one offensive possession and done. They're mm -hmm. not getting the second and third opportunities because UCAP is boxing out. UCAP, UCAP is getting the basketball. Yep, they've been playing very good defense throughout the game. They're rebounding. And what a pass in the paint and gets it a fall. Number thirty, Hannah LeBeau. That was nice. Nice catch by Hannah and putting it up almost, almost simultaneously. It was like a bang bang play off the glass. Quick shot. Rivera with the bounce pass to Oliver. Oliver looking to drive, putting it up. 
It was off of the off of the, the rim, I should say. This one throws up two in and out, rebounded again by Deborah Banks. Throwing it away and stolen by UCAP. Throws it up with the left so hand, two point layup. BCC is getting the basketball. They're rebounding the basketball on the defensive end and then immediately turn the ball over. They've done that a few times. Yep, just too many turnovers the Bayhawks are having. Pass to Banks. Banks putting up with the left hand, can't get it to go. And Deborah Banks is Ofa. Yep. BCC's offense been going cold as this one in and out rebounded. But see how the pointers, Craig, how they're not settling. See how she didn't settle for that shot? She had the open shot in the corner, but she decided to drive it, to drive it in to get a better shot. And that's what they're just playing smarter basketball. It's not rocket science. Yep. It's working for them. It's a 30 point game. Yeah. BCC settling for a lot of silly shots. Yep. Oliver going with the left hand, stopping herself. Picks it up, tries to find someone, finds Rivera. Rivera going up the middle, sets it, puts it up for two. No good, tries to get her own rebound. Eventually does come down with it, throws up another one, and she's going to go to the line. Coach Serge Moniz wasn't lying when he said that Iris Rivera is going to be a key contributor on this team. She's been the entire offense. I don't care what you say. She's had the ball in her hand trying to create opportunities almost every time down floor, and she ends up at the free throw line for more opportunities. That makes the first one. She's been the only one drawing fouls for this Bayhawks team. Well, she's one of the only, she's one of the only players on BCC, Craig, that is able to um, create her own offense, to create her own offensive opportunities. Yep, she sings that one. And she has a nice, pretty looking shot there. She's getting it to work. Yankee passing it back to Brennan. Brennan giving it away, throws it up. No good, rebounded by Rivera. She's all over the place. She's doing it all. And she finds Kaylee Oliver. Kaylee Oliver putting up a three. Gets Nails it. Nails it. KO, Kaylee Oliver. And now, now a miscue, but it works out as Boyce hangs on to it. I think they're calling him Kelly carrying Oliver it. Kelly keeps uh, making shots like that, Greg. She might be uh, this year's new Megan Parrish. Megan <laughs> Parrish better get on her game. It's early in the season. I'm sure they'll figure it out. <laughs> Casey Amaral loses it, though, as Brennan drives. Gives it to Bianchi. Bianchi with a two-pointer. Good. Nice. Good job, Bianchi, setting yourself, getting it to go for two. As Oliver, it's now she's guarding Oliver. Oliver giving away to Parrish. There's a lob over to Perino. Megan, Megan connection. And the foul is called. It's on 33. Not sure if it was blue, and it was 33 and blue. That is Jonah Burns. Bayhawks in the bonus, so Perino going to the line for the first time this game. Bristol offensively, they look stagnant all night. They're not, they're not moving well without the basketball. If you look at the pointers, they're, they're running motion offense. They're, they're setting picks for each other. They're making the extra pass. They're moving the, they're moving the ball to quickness. They got that BCC zone shifting and not knowing what the heck is going on. They're finding holes in the BCC defense, and they're, they're making, ba they're making baskets. You know, they're turning their. You know, they're turning their defense, they're getting steals, they're turning defense into offense. Much more fluid game on the offensive end for the pointers, and it shows. Now Rivera does a good job getting the rebound of the foul shot, putting it in for two. UCAP losing it, but they get it back as Brennan tries to put it. Deborah Banks gets another rebound. And the foul is going to be called. Foul is going to be called on UCAP. Yep, so going to the line will be Deborah Banks. Yep, that's a fifth uh, team foul for the pointers. We commented last year Deborah Banks was an excellent uh, free throw. I keep wanting to say three throw. I can't speak. I keep saying free throw, but I'm like mixing up the letters. Anyway, so Craig, we were saying last year that. Craig, is that damn app that you're playing with. <laughs> bruh. <laughs> I like to see you try to try to call the game. Use that app and chew gum at the same time. Okay, give me some gum. <laughs> you got to get the app down first before you can chew gum. 
I like gum, though. <laughs> Deborah Banks getting it to go. You cap trying to call a play. And Lawrence Boyce gets it to Brennan in the paint. Nice pass again to Taki, but it's a travel on Taki. I like how the pointers, how they're into the game. Their, their bench is vocal. They're helping each other on the bench. They're pointing things out. And then you look at the BCC bench over here. And I'm not even sure it's over here, but there's no, it's the exact opposite. And BCC not having as much to cheer about this game. Iris puts up a be, three, oh, she, she gets it. it. If there's anything to cheer about this game though, it's Ben Iris Rivera. Definitely a bright spot. She there's, launched that one. There's a pass to Taki trying to get a three of her own. Can't get it. Rebounded by Jones. Jones throws it up. Awkward shot, but she gets fouled on the play. And that's a foul on Megan Parrish. Well, the one bright thing is they've cut into this lead a little bit from where it was before, 25, 26 points. At one time, it was 61, it was 61 to 35. And BCC on a on a 12 to well 12 to 7 run now. Yep, and we're winding down in the third run. quarter, less than a minute. BCC going to want a big run in the fourth quarter. Yeah, a big run. And Jones can't get that one to go. Is Banks with a rebound again? Oliver. They got to be careful they don't get run out the gym. <laughs> and again, Rivera to the line. I like how she's taking matter into her own hands. Nice hustle by Parrish. Yep, Brennan, get, Brennan tried to draw a charge. All sorts of craziness right there. You want to stay BCC basketball? That that ball went out of bounds. Yeah, but did you want it aggressive? It was pretty aggressive right there. Ruthless aggression. Oliver airmails it. Just out of the reach of Deborah wow. Banks. You don't need that right now. You had a chance to cut that lead to 19. Yep. Maybe 18. Every possession counts now. Friends, boys, the inbound pass, steal yeah, from Deborah know. Banks. I don't know who she, she threw that right into a sea of white. That she did. Rare mistake by LaFrance. Oliver loses this one, and now LaFrance takes it, trying to redeem herself. And they're calling a double dribble off of that. And just a careless mistake from LaFrance. I think you can I think you can get away with that with a 21 point lead going into the fourth quarter pretty soon. But again, just a simple mistake. Well, Wasn't think, really paying I think attention. You can get away with that when you've been tearing you know what up from three point land. That she has. She's been doing it all game. Parrish gives it to Oliver. Lefty LaFrance. Banks now there with 12 you go, seconds Deborah. left. There you go. Deborah Banks driving to the hole for two points off the layup. This is going to be the last possession, maybe the last play. Get with the program. Bianchi throwing up a two, can't get it to fall, rebounded by the Bayhawks, and they're just going to let the clock go here. You know, and I like to see more of that. They use that with Deborah Banks coming up high, coming up to the, coming up to the free throw line, coming up to the top of the key, and then driving to the basket and lays it off the glass and in. They need to need to do more of that. Yeah, it's a good in-drive layup. They're uh, cutting the deficit less than 20 now. So they got 10 minutes to really go on a run. Well, I hate to talk about moral victories because right now down 19, you're, you're, you only have six active players. And I mean, you get 10 minutes. And right now, if you're BCC, you really like to at least cut this game, you know, to 10. You know, you like to cut it to 10 by the five minute mark. That's your goal, short term goals. If we learn anything from our local teams like the New England Patriots, you know, it's focusing one one possession at a time, one one play at a time for these girls, one shot at a time, one offensive possession at a time, one defensive possession at a time. Got to get stops. And it can be done. You hit a three-pointer, you get a couple layups, you get a couple steals. Next thing you know, you're down 15, 14, 13. It can get, it can, it can get done. And, and the but, wise words of Bill Russell, this game has always been about buckets. <laughs> Oh, man. 
Bill Russell, one of the greatest champions we've ever seen in any sport. 11 times. He needs more, he needs more hands to fit all his rings. <laughs> or, or an extra finger, an extra thumb. Extra thumb. BCC really needs to dig in right now. Play defense. Don't be afraid to foul. Don't be afraid to be aggressive. Don't be afraid to get physical, because right now it's only 10 minutes left in the game. Home opener. You need to leave it all out on the court right now. Bayhawks only have one player in foul trouble. That's Deborah Banks, who has four right now. And now UCAP beginning this fourth quarter. And now just the pass, Bianchi giving it to Jones. Shirt. Jones you going. Can't give up baseline like that. Jones drives to the hoop and draws a foul. And you don't want to foul. But you know what? If you are going to foul, knock the girl on her booty. Don't do these little knick-knack fouls. Knock her down. Make her feel it. Use that, use that body. I'm talking about Aris Rivera. That's a little knick-knack foul. You want to use your body. Yeah, Rivera really just grazed her. And they gave her, yeah. It wasn't that hard of a foul. It was a foul, but you get to take away baseline from her. One thing they've ever learned playing basketball, when you've got someone driving baseline, you do not let them get baseline. My coaches would take you out, they'll definitely take you out of the game for that. You gotta beat, the, you gotta beat them to the spot, and get that foot on the baseline. More discussion on the court. Get that position and take that, take that charge, or at least try to take that charge. And we got some more uncertainty here. Well, Craig, I'm going to take the time right now during this. Uh, well, we'll see what's going on here. Well, they're giving her two shots. That's what's happening so far. So Shayla Jones getting two shots. Yeah. Misses the first one. As we broadcast you on FR Media, the Dirty Water Sports Hour with myself, Mr. Cardoza, and the Portuguese Cowboy over here, Craig Salvador, and the great Lucy Cabral on the camera work. The new Dirty Water Sports Hour, new and improved, will be coming to you on FR Media and on BCCRadio.org. Be looking that for look, be looking for that on Thursdays. Be coming pretty soon. This is the check, uh, check your local listings. <laughs> Need to get T-shirts made. Yeah. Ours. It's a basketball. Come on now. As the drive getting back there. Oh goodness. Boyer just. With authority, putting it in for two. How many fouls does Megan Parrish have? She has, I think she has three. Yeah, so I don't blame her for not wanting to get a foul there, but. Oh, nice pass to Oliver. And giving it, trying to give it to Banks, but loses uh. it. Brennan on her horse, putting it up and lays it in for two. And that, you know, I kind of feel for the girls here because I know I've been getting on him for not foul, not wanting to foul, or not being aggressive enough. But it's tough when you only have six players. They don't want to risk losing too many people as Parrish comes up with it, looking to drive, going in with the right hand and just can't get it to fall. It's just not, it's just not Megan's night tonight. No, but I don't know. Bianchi inbound pass, easy that's two. Too easy. That is the easiest play you will see in this game. You wanted a good start if you're going to try to cut into this lead and try to make it interesting. And BCC with the timeout, and I tell you, Dave, the pointer's really just running all over the Bayhawks right yeah, now. They're, yeah, they're 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 blowing the Bayhawks out of the gym right now, and I feel like I don't know. I I just feel like the timeouts they're not taking enough timeouts here. I mean, I know you only got so many timeouts, but I just feel like the timeouts aren't timely. These girls are tired. They've only got six active players, like we keep mentioning. And I know I've been getting on them for not being aggressive enough or not wanting to make physical contact or for their defense. I know their defense has been a little bit vanilla, but I think the thing is that they're really scared to foul because they're afraid to foul out of the game. And to play with four or, five or less than five players is embarrassing. 
So I kind of feel for them and kind of empathize with them there. So, you know. Yep. You're, they, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yep. Need more players. Season's young, Dave, so we'll see where this can go. Yeah. And last year we seen BCC, we made, we seen as the season went along, they even had a little bit of a winning streak there in, in December, you know, where they where they went a, where they strung strung together about three wins or yep. so and were playing better. They show some gradual improvement, so we'll see. Yep. Second game of the season. Yeah, Rivera looking to do something. Hands off to Oliver. Oliver with a three. She's been good from out there. K. Oh. That one goes. Okay. Look at you already getting ready with the nicknames. That <laughs> one gets right. laid in. That's right. And Parrish now putting it in for two and does get it to go. That ball almost didn't want to go. That that rim. That hoop is angry right now at Megan Parrish. Hmm. Throw behind the back, no. There are some bright spots for BCC here, though. And, and two of those are the newcomers, the young freshmen, Oliver and and uh, and Iris Rivera. Yep. This was something I did want to bring up. You were talking about the team. They get, they'll get better throughout the season. you got to remember it's... Uh, with the way a community college team usually is, a lot of the time the team is built up of freshmen, so a lot of these players are playing together for one of the first few times here, so really it'll take some time for them to really mold and gel as a team. And Craig, you're exactly right. You're talking about two girls coming into a new team where they have players that are already here that are key contributors, that are good players, and Deborah Banks and Megan Paris are coming onto their team. So it's tough to come in here and try to, try to be assertive. They'll, they'll have to find their way. Yep. Megan now going to the right, laying it in, and now she's starting to get some points going. And once she starts getting that going, you're going to be a better team because of it. Could be a little too little too late as Bianchi able to lay it in with the left hand, but could be some bright spots and some upsides to look forward to during the rest of the season. Yeah, I like KO. I like Iris Rivera. The disappointments today have been Megan Parrish and Deborah Banks. They, they just haven't they just haven't found the found the bottom of the well, and that's you know Parrish that, that will that will change. Yeah, Parrish again throwing it up, but too strong on it. She plays hard though. She definitely has heart. All the time in the world for this three as it goes over, but rebounded by UCAP and Fr LaFrance Boyer putting it in. So that's been the story of the game. A lot of easy baskets from the pointers. Yeah, the point is really kind of just toying with them at this point as Perino can't come down with it. It goes out of bounds. Another easy turnover. Well, they're tired. They're tired. I mean, they're clearly, you know, a couple of the girls are, you know, are huffing and puffing out there, gasping for air. And again, BCC only with six active players. Look to get more throughout the season as Brennan throws up a two and gets it to fall. And they're going to call it a three. Hands up in the air. Mia Brennan with a three-pointer. Yep. Perino. They're going to call a travel on Perino, and she is not happy about it. And this is the thing, Craig. When, when Megan Parrish is out of the game, and Megan Parrish is clearly the point guard and, you know, runs the offense, who's going to run the offense when Megan Parrish is out of the game? I'm not sure who that is exactly yet. No, nope. the offense run through. No, nope. they need someone to step up in this. And now a deep three from Brennan airballs it. Wide left. Rivera coming up with it. Rivera with the long pass to nice Banks. Pass. Banks wide open, puts it up, and gets it to fall. Easy pass, that's easy a, play. That's a nice pass by a, by Miss Iris Rivera. Yep. Iris Nita. Yep, and Deborah Banks gets some easy bucks, buckets. As this one falls into the arms of Rivera, who gets another rebound, trying a very similar play, this time to Oliver. Oliver setting her feet, giving it to Amaral. Amaral loses it, and they're calling a travel on her. I think as the game's been along, Craig, I think um, I think uh, Kaylee Oliver and, and Iris and Iris Rivera, I think they've grown more confidence, and they're looking to, they're looking to shoot more and make more plays, and you know. And just just be more aggressive on the offensive end. Yep, they are the leading scorers right now. Oliver has 21 points. Rivera not too far behind her with 19. 
it. Imagine, imagine if Megan Parrish played her game and the boss, Deborah Banks, was, do, was doing her thing offensively. This would be a lot closer game. Those two, how many points combined do Deborah Banks and Megan Parrish have? Between them, right now they only have, they have 18 between both of them. That's more than, see, that's more than even I thought. That was a long pass. You thought they were scoring lower than that. I thought they were scoring lower than that, yeah. Hmm. Do we have points for Megan Parrish? She has nine. Deborah Banks and Megan Parrish both have nine. Really? Okay. And that we, we expect that to improve. I think most of them are coming from free throws, though. Right. Stack offense getting... Spread out is Taki throwing it up for a three. Takes a I while, mean. can't get it to fall. BCC hasn't even sent the pointers to the line. They haven't even gone to the line that much. Oh, and there's a big mistake right there. <laughs> Casey Amaral, wide open, had big, the points lined up, but it huge, just falls out of her big hands. Big mistake, down 26. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big, that was going to make a difference. Hey, 60 looks better than 58. You're going to make her feel like she lost the game now. That's a big <laughs> mistake. I'll apologize. That's all right. Rivera coming up with another rebound. We seem to live in a land of apologies nowadays in the it, sensitive world we live in. Yep, the way of the world. It's you millennials. You did it. I'm not going to argue. <laughs> I'll stick up for the millennials, but the millennials. we're definitely uh, – there are a sensitive bunch. It's all the soccer moms now. <laughs> uh, soccer moms yeah. I'll, I'll save that for our show <laughs> I'll save that for the internet the internet <laughs> this TV Megan Parrish yeah. getting two that's still a thing right nowadays isn't it? the internet it's still a, the internet it's I pretty know, I know the internet came about when I was coming up did Bianchi call glass on that yes she did so it went off the glass Well, the one thing BCC is going to do, they're going to keep them from scoring the century mark. Yeah, 88 to 60, three minutes remaining. And there's another easy basket. This time, jo Jonah Burns, not Jaina, Jonah Burns getting it to fall. And the UConn looking to advance to be 2-0 and and 2-0 and in Region 21. Yep. Banks trying to set the pick. Banks ends up getting it, but gets it knocked away, and it falls into UCAP's hands. And Burns wide open, throws it in for the layup. And another timeout called. Is this, are we, are we in La France Gymnasium? Is that the name of this gymnasium? Because that's something I did not know. That's <laughs> that actually and very if that's interesting. Case, if, that, if that's the case, La France Voice has made this her gymnasium. It's been La France's night here in La France Gymnasium. Is it named after her? Because she has owned Bishop Conley High School. She has owned BCC here tonight. Yep, she's been getting it done with both her layups, defense, and also her three-point shooting. She's a nifty one, 92 to 60. And who does BC, who the Bayhawks, who the, the Lady Bayhawks play this Saturday in our next home game? Well, with it, them only having six active players, it's probably going to be more of the same, just kind of improve upon what they have right now. No, I mean, who are they going to play, Craig? Oh. I thought you meant who they. I thought you meant who they're gonna play no, as in like who yeah, their players are gonna be. New team in here? No. Yeah. Saturday we have a doubleheader, but stay tuned. Stay tuned for the men's Bayhawks team to be coming to you after this. The men's Bayhawks team coming off a win against Massasoit in the first game of the season in the season opener. They play here at La France Gymnasium here at Bishop Connolly High School in Fall River, Massachusetts. <laughs> who is this La France guy? We got to get some uh, headway on that. We got to see who that is. Must be someone special. He's got a gym named after him. <laughs> but he had to have done something. Uh, Paris tried to pass that one, but it got knocked away from Rivera. But the men's team, as I said, Craig, they'll come into today's game. They're the third ranked team in Region 21. They were one of the top two teams last year. And we're looking forward to a big matchup here against UConn at Avery Point, who they have great games with. It's an exciting game when those two teams play against each other. Hmm. 
See the series of events. Bayhawks just could not buy a rebound on that sequence. Story of the game. That was Egypt Santos laying it in for an easy two. BCC trying to get some passing going. Iris taking it herself. One for the rebound, but Banks with the rebound. Iris yeah. went for the three-pointer, couldn't get it. Banks missed the layup. And to the contrary, Craig, it looks like um, the pointers, they might have an outside shot here at scoring the uh, triple figures here. They might do it as a pass. Yeah, they oh. look like the Harlem Globetrotters for three. Boys wide <laughs> open like a 24-hour McDonald's sinking the three. La France, La France Gymnasium over there, a third gym. <laughs> nope, she has been lighting it up no. right now. It's no longer La France Gymnasium, it's La France Boys Gymnasium. Heel turn. Heel turn. <laughs> Get her to play for us, it'll be a uh, face this turn. This is my gym. That one going out of bounds, and yeah, the fan gets totally a souvenir. Come, you could totally see her coming on the court after the game with a microphone in hand. This is no longer La France Gymnasium. This is now the France Boys Gymnasium. See if Drop she some mics and leave. See if she gets booed out of the building. Oh, I love that. <laughs> the loudest people in the building are the um, the UCAP, the UConn at every point bench. They've been very, very, um, very loud today, and very into the game, very focused, very engaged, and you like to see that. And that team looks like they're going places. 2-0 to start off the young season. And they'll have a great ride back to Connecticut, I'm sure. And in the meantime, with the last minute here, Deborah Banks has just fouled out. Doesn't really matter at this point, but it happened. Burns trying to put it up. And Rivera had the rebound, got it knocked out of her hands. And as you said, Craig, um, Deborah Banks did foul out. I wish she made it. I wish she... Um, Made it worth it. I wish she, I wish she earned that foul out. Yep. Oh, look at it was like a little lazy pass. I went out of bounds. Ninety-seven to sixty. Nope. Rough night to start here. Needless to say, for this doubleheader. <laughs> Oliver trying inbound pass. Rivera. Just gonna give it to Parrish. 30 seconds left, Parrish with the jumper for two, and gets it to go. We want to, see. we want to see that crossover dribble going to her left. She's not that, she's not bad going to her left. This is go do it. Nope. And shot clock off as we're in the final 20 seconds and probably just going to be holding on to it. I'm going to get up there and show her fundamentals. Oh, you're going to post. I thought you were just going to say get in the game. <laughs> I was going to say you're going to posterize someone. <laughs> And they're just going to let the clock go. So this will have the final score of 97 to 62. The UCAP pointers win in the game. Good effort, though, by BCC in the second half. I thought they really livened up, and they did a much better job on the offensive end. I think they finished in the first half with how many points? Not even sure. I know it was in the 20s, and they end up with 62. But um, BCC, obviously a work in progress, Craig. A lot of easy baskets for the pointers today. I thought they really played a fluid game, and they really looked like one of the better teams in Region 21, so congratulations to UConn. Bristol Community College Bayhawks versus University of Connecticut at Avery Point. 